Welcome back, everyone, to episode number 13 in our Let's Play series of Industry Manager Future Technologies. And as you can see in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, I've got the time paused right now. And that's because I want to take a look at something real quick uh, before we get started and jump into what we've got planned for this particular video. Now, I don't want to explain too much right now, but basically I just want to sort of go through these Real quickly, we've already discussed in a previous episode why we figured out why we've got so many units stored there. But we're just going to quickly flip through here. This will become more apparent why we're doing this. We'll come back to it later in the video. How much later? We'll see. But uh, we'll come back to this later on in the video. But I do want to, just for uh, the purposes of the video, go ahead and get this out of the way. And we'll see what this comes to. Okay, so everything looks good there. Let's go ahead and and start the time. And hopefully, hopefully that wasn't too terribly cryptic for you guys. But again, I promise this will become more and more clear as we get on with the video. So already I can see that we were up around 200000 for our profit. And now we're back. Okay, so we had a brief dip there. Not sure what caused that. But now we're back 220000 per day. So, okay, everything is going good. Let's talk about where we want to go from here. If we come back to our production tree screen, you'll notice that we started off as a software company and we worked our way through several of these products. Then we moved over to personal electronics and we've worked our way through some of these products as well. Well, I thought I would take it in a completely different direction. Now, in real world terms for a company, what you would want to do is stick within a particular industry until you filled out everything that you want to do within that industry. And the reason is, is because you're already, and, and for example, in the personal electronics industry, you're already making so many of the parts and pieces that you're going to need for all of these various things. So you want to maximize the use of your various factories for your raw materials and secondary resources so and components so that you can produce as many of these as you can and maximize your profits. Well, for the purposes of the video series, I'm not going to do that because what I'm trying to do is briefly touch on several different industries. So with that in mind, I'm going to move on to the vehicle factory. Now, if you remember in previous video, we got a message telling us that, hey, by the way, cars are selling really good now and you're, you can make a potentially a lot of profit on those. So take a look. So let's take a look. And Obviously, we've had no reason to research Vehicle Factory up until now because we didn't have anything to do with cars. But as you know, te technology moves forward, cars are, are becoming more and more like basic personal computers where they've already got hard drives in them. They've already got processors in them and so forth. So they're becoming more and more like computers. And as you can see, we work our way down the list here, we finally get to hover car, we got self-driving electric cars, flying cars, and so on. So they're becoming more computerized anyway. So let's go ahead and move our way into the family car business. So with that in mind, let's come to our research. Let's go to Vehicle Factory and go ahead. And yes, we've gotten this message so far on every industry. It is very difficult. There's a lot of things to make or buy. And we're fine with that. We're going to go ahead and get that started. I want to go ahead and queue up workforce because I'm going to want to max that out for sure. And we're going to go ahead and queue up the family cars, and we might as well go ahead and queue up this as well. Okay, so we've got a few things going here. We'll definitely expand on that as time goes, but we're going to go ahead and let that work. Our research goes extremely quickly now, even on regular speed. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and take a look at one thing. That, um, I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and speed up time a little bit more. And let's go ahead and bring back our mini map that we'd had, we had toggled off here. And let's go ahead and take a look at one thing. Now, I'm almost positive here that, that the game is trolling me uh, from time to time by throwing random events at me. And we'll take a look at, at that a little bit more as, as time goes on. But it seems like every time I start a video... I'm having to go in and find a resource that is routed to or from the wrong warehouse. Well, 
This is a bit odd, but we we'll go into our product section, smartphones and now laptops. We notice here, oh look, there are zero integrated circuits left in this particular warehouse. Well, which warehouse is that? Let's find out. Integrated circuits are coming from our very first warehouse because it's the only one we didn't change to a number. And, but I remember I didn't put those in that warehouse. They are in warehouse number two. So regardless of whether the game is trolling me or I'm simply just that bad at setting these up, I figure the game has got to be trolling me because we wouldn't have been able to make anything from the very beginning of these laptops, which we definitely were, had I not put the right warehouse down there. So I think maybe the game is just throwing random events at you uh, for added difficulty and, and sort of add some drama as the game unfolds. So as you can see now, we've gotten the proper warehouse selected and everything is rolling. So we're back to producing our maximum per day. So, okay, great, that's going. Let's take a look at our research. We've already gotten the first two out of the way. Actually, the first three, we unlocked the vehicle factory, family cars, almost done with large goods truck, but we've also gotten our one of our workforce upgrades out of the way. So we're gonna go ahead and do two more of those and then go ahead and queue up some other things as well, just to get the the pipeline going. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we're actually going to need here to make our very first car, which is the family car. So we're going to make the grocery getter. And so what do we need? Well, a lot of things, as you can see. But if you have been following along with the series, you know that several of these already look familiar, such as plastics, rubber, chemicals, and electronic components. We're already making these. So that's excellent. Then, so we come down to what's the first thing we're actually going to need to make, which is steel alloy. Okay, we need to make that in the metal forge. We've already got that unlocked, so no uh, research needed for that. So we're, for that, we're going to need aluminum, which we are already mining, iron, which we are not, coal, which we are not, and copper, which we are mining. So let's go ahead and get started with iron and coal. Okay. And we've got everything going here. Let's make sure our research hasn't already. Okay, so it's moving along very quickly. So let's see what this area has. So we got aluminum here. And let's see, what do we need? We need iron and coal. So we've got coal here, 760. Again, I'm not sure if that's a lot or just a little or, you know, or what. But let's take a look at iron, 496 and 760. All right, let's take a look at just another one. We've got three and 11, a lot more coal there, but not near as much iron. So I think we're okay here to use these numbers. We'll go ahead and extract as much as we can. Again, not because we actually need all of that yet. We don't know how much we need yet. Let's see, an independent entrepreneur is looking to make, is willing to pay. Nah, we're just not gonna mess with that. We've got plenty of copper, but I'm just, you know, at this point, we've got a different agenda right now. So I'm not gonna worry too much about that. So let's go ahead and get some mines up and running here, assuming, of course, that we have enough space to do so. All right, building shop. Let's get our mine. Mines are large items in this game. They are very, take up a lot of space. So we're going to put this one down here. And then we need a second one that I'm going to try to put in here right there. Okay, so these are building rather quickly. Again, even on regular speed, our construction, because of our research, has really sped up this. All right, so we've got our first mine up and running. And so what do we need to make here? First of all, let's take a look at our main screen. We do want to maximize our workers. Again, we're going to make all of the uh, raw material that we can, even though we won't necessarily need it right now, and that's because, oh, wait. If you look... In the bottom right hand corner, um, if you're like me, you sort of glance at this every so often, even while we're doing other things, just to make sure that nothing is going too haywire. Now, before, toward the beginning of the video, we were at around 200 to 220,000 per day. Now we're at negative $396,000 per day, or not actually dollars, but for our purposes, we'll just say dollars. Negative 396. So obviously, something went horribly wrong here, horribly wrong, 
but yet I didn't get any news event. I mean, you would think with all the things that pop up on the screen, I would get something to tell me that, oh, by the way, you went from making $220,000 per day to now you're losing basically $400,000 per day. Something has got to happen there. Well, if I look here, we got research complete. Yep, all of that is exactly as we would expect it to be. I mean, all of this is perfectly fine. Nothing is there to tell me that things have gone extremely bad. And I've also got no way to know instantly what happened. So let's go ahead and while we're in here, we're going to set this up and we're going to produce some things. And then we're going to go searching for exactly what happened and why we're losing uh, so much money. Now, I'm going to leave things as paused for now because I don't want to continually lose that much money any longer than I have to. So if we come back to the task at hand, we know that we need iron and coal. So let's go ahead and choose, uh, let's choose iron here. So we've got iron and we're gonna create that, max out our quality. Again, I'm not even sure that that matters. Uh, we haven't had time to delve into that. And we're gonna max out our daily production, which is 495, which is dictated by the area and the land that we're in. So we're gonna make 495. Okay, no problem at all. So that's good. Where are we gonna take this? Well, because of the way things have been going, uh, if you're following along with the series, you'll know that we run through uh, available space very quickly. So I'm gonna go ahead and put down another warehouse while we're at it. No reason really not to at this point. And boy, they're just, we're just not up on room here. So I'm going to fit this thing in here. All kinds of crooked. And <laughs> that is horrendous. That is not what I expected to happen, but so be it. So we're going to have all of this happen as efficiently as we can anyway. Okay. All right. So we come back to the warehouse. We're going to use this particular warehouse. And this warehouse is now going to be number four. Get rid of that name and we're going to change that out to simply four okay and for now it has absolutely nothing in it which is perfect because it is about to have lots and lots of iron in it so warehouse four send all of your iron there okay now let's go to our second new mine and here we need coal but first we need to upgrade our workforce to produce probably way more coal than we're going to be using right now Okay, so 760 is the maximum we can make there. And max out our quality. And max out our production. And you can see how the numbers add up there. Do we want to hire enough workers? Absolutely, we do. And you can see now things are just getting worse and worse for us. Most of this has to do with hiring additional workers uh, and building new, uh, new facilities. So that's okay. We expect that it happens every time we expand into new products or resources. So no problem at all. All right, so we've gotten those two things taken care of. All right, before we go any further, I want to see why on earth we are losing so much money. And to do that, I'm going to start my search by going back to one of our cities and taking a look at how sales are going. And so far, so good. So far, so good. Oh, wait. So let's go ahead and pause right here. And you can see that we are now selling exactly zero of these. Now, if you remember back to the beginning of the video, we were selling all of the mobile phones that we were making. Now, suddenly, we're not selling any. If I continue to click through here, you can see that in general, things are going quite well. And again, what I'm defining as quite well is unit stored is very low and not continuing to grow. So it means that we're doing okay. Not necessarily optimized, but we're doing okay. So then I come back over to smart glasses. Hmm. I see something that is starting to create a trend here. Our mobile phone selling zero. Smart glasses now selling zero and starting to store tons and tons of these. And we're back to our other products are doing just fine. And now smartphones selling zero, starting to store up tons of these. 
oh look, laptops selling zero, tons of these are being stored. Now, this makes no sense to me. Again, our profit went way down to the point that we're losing a couple of hundred thousand per day. No event was shown on the screen. Uh, in fact, as, as we were working on our new products, you know, and getting our iron and coal production going, there would be nothing to tell me that there was an issue at all unless I was glancing to see the profit. So thankfully I was. And now I'm wondering, since we're selling none of these, we're incurring all of the cost for production of not only the smartphones and the smart glasses and so on, but we're incurring all of the cost from the secondary components that make up these things, such as your carbon fiber and your circuits and so on, and also the raw materials that go into making this, such as the aluminum or copper or what have you. And now we're not selling any. We haven't changed our prices. Our prices were working perfectly fine in game time a couple of days ago. And now we're selling zero. So this makes no sense whatsoever to me. And so now I'm going to try the only thing I know to do since there are no events in here, no history, no, you know, no messages that we've seen from time to time. Like, you know, there's a huge banking crisis. There's um, swine flu has hit your farms, you know, nothing like that for me to say, oh, okay, now it explains why this has happened. It's just simply the demand for these things are completely gone. And I'm left with no way of knowing why that has happened. So not particularly thrilled about that. And that kind of annoys me about the game. So what I'm going to do is start changing these prices and see that if we had some huge glitch that happened for that. So I'm going to do a huge change here in pricing just in this one city because this is where all the demand is. These other cities, and, and, and by the way, if, if you're just starting out now in the game, you've been watching the series but you haven't started yet, I would not recommend starting up shops in every city. Just pick one and roll with that. I did that uh, at the very beginning just for the purposes of illustration that you can open up shops in multiple cities. We're not going to worry about progress reports right now. Uh, we know how things are going and very badly. So we've got all of these that are selling zero. So I'm just going to start slashing prices pretty drastically and see if, if this changes anything. At this point, I have actually no idea. So this one, we're going to go ahead and just make it 150. You know, I don't particularly care what our profit margin is. Uh, that's not really what this is about. But let's just go ahead and spend just a little time here to see if that helps. Now, while we're allowing that to have a few days to hopefully work itself out, let's go ahead and get some more research started because research goes by quickly here. Workforce is already taken care of. Let's go ahead and get a couple of more engines, all-wheel drive, and energy efficiency. It looks like that's all that's opened up right now for us. Compact design. Okay, that'll take care of that. Let's head back to what we were working on. So family car, we've got plastics, we've got rubber, we've got chemicals. Now we've got all of these items working. So now we need to come back and make some steel alloy in our metal forge. All right, so let's come back over to our area. I'm just going to try to keep this in here if I have any room left after my awkward placement of some of these things. All right, so we're going to need a metal forge. Let's find our metal forge. Here it is. And oh, yeah, we've got we still got plenty of room in here. Okay, we're going to go ahead and put this right there. Okay, metal forge. And we're going to use our metal forge to make steel alloy, which will be the next component as we work toward making our very first car, which is a pretty big step considering that our company has spent all our time making software products and personal electronics. So this is quite a huge step up for our company. All right, we're ready to go. And as normal, I'm going to upgrade our workforce to the maximum. Again, even though we don't necessarily need this, and I would not recommend doing that from the very beginning uh, in your playthrough. All right, steel alloy is what we're after. So we'll go ahead and set that up, max out our quality. And max out production. Wow, looks like we're going to be able to make quite a few. We can make a thousand there. 
Okay, so we've got this part taken care of. Let's go ahead and get some resources added in our transportation routes. First and foremost, let's go ahead and get our final product, and we're going to send it to our brand new warehouse, number four. Now let's start in with all the things we need. We need aluminum, and aluminum is, for us, stored in warehouse number two, and there's our aluminum. And iron, we just set up, and it is going to warehouse four. And next on the list is coal. Coal also going to warehouse four, which is just set up. Okay, so everything going good so far. Now we need copper. And where is copper? In our case, it is in warehouse number three. All right, so everything is set up. Let's take a moment and see. Here comes our production. And we'll come back out to our production lines, take a look at what's here. And looks like we have no aluminum. Okay, so I've set up something incorrectly. So I said our aluminum was in number two. It actually turns out that our aluminum is going to be in number three. Let's take a look now and see. And lo and behold, everything is there in plenty of quantity that we need it. Again, you can see that our quantities are coming just along just fine there. Let's take a look at what's in our new warehouse. We've got iron, coal, and now steel alloy is being produced and sent there as well. Excellent. So with that in mind, you can see that, again, if you keep in mind, like if you keep in sight this profit percentage, you can see it has gone nowhere good. So let's go ahead and pause the game again. And before we continue on with our production, let's take a look. Are we selling anything? Oh, great. We're selling 12. So what's happened to us is the game, I don't know if this is a bug or if this is just a random event that the game throws at you to see if you're paying attention or, or whatever. I'm not sure. But the demand for mobile phones is now 12. Now, to give you some sort of a, an idea about what this is going on, if you look, we can see the same thing is happening here. I mean, huge swing in demand. So let's take a look. Now, laptops. Okay, laptops, the most recent item that we made from start to finish before we moved into the vehicle area. Laptop demand at this particular city was at 1,450 or thereabouts. It, it you know, varies a little bit, but 1,450 units. Now we're down to 26. Now, there is absolutely no way that we're going to make money doing that without redefining our entire production chain and making practically none of the raw materials and everything else that goes into this. Same thing with smartphones. Smartphones, we had approximately 1,400 demand. Now we're down to 24. So there's simply no way that I can explain how this has happened. Smart glasses was about 500 on the demand before. Now it's down to eight. Okay, now yes, I can continue changing these prices, but the demand was much higher at a much higher sales price. So what I'm going to do here is just for fun, because this seems to be a no win situation for us. I'm going to go ahead and continue to lower this. And we're going to go ahead and get this all the way down to let's go ahead and make it. Let's go down to 100 from 145 to 100. Again, a sizable decrease in our pricing. We're going to do the same thing here. Let's take this down to 100. And here we don't have all that much room to decrease this, but I'm going to go ahead and make this 350. So our profit margin is nearly gone now on that particular item. And again, same thing here. We don't have much room to continue making a profit while lowering prices, but at this point, we're just going to see if we can do anything to stimulate this demand, which is essentially zero for these products right now. And the most disturbing thing is I still don't have any reason for what's happened. So I'm going to try to put that aside and we're going to go back to it. In the meantime, we'll keep an idea on this profit and see if there's any way on, on earth that it actually changes. Or if maybe it was just a temporary glitch or maybe the maybe something is happening uh, randomly in the game by design. All right, so let's come back into our production tree. Now we are making steel alloy. Now, next thing on the list, we now have the top four. We need to make some car glass. But unfortunately, we're running a little bit long on the video time, and I don't want to get into extremely long videos. So I feel like this is probably a good place 
to stop. And when we come back next time on the video, we'll pick up with car glass and move our way down the list. And we'll also, the big thing will be, is this going to continue or is this just sort of a, a momentary glitch or something like that with the game? So I appreciate you joining me. Uh, if this has happened to you in your game and it has either passed or it has continued on, let me know in the comments section. Really appreciate you joining me for episode 13 of Industry Manager Future Technologies.